Hi and welcome to Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I'll cover all the new features in Elementor version 3.10. This includes both the free and the pro versions. Let's get into it. Starting with number one, you have container based website kits and templates. What do I mean by that? Well, if you try to import a template, it can be a blog, it can be a page. Let's say I'll insert this template into my page post or a template. It doesn't matter. You can see it's basically using the Flexbox container layout. Now, if you don't know what a Flexbox container is, I've made a ton of videos on the channel. Check out Elementor Basics playlist or just search for Elementor Flexbox on the channel. There are a ton of them. So all of the template is basically using the Flexbox container. If I click on it, you can see that it shows edit container and the same applies to website kits. So if we go to website kit library, and we just click on it and I click on overview all of these pages are basically made of flexbox containers reducing the number of div elements and enabling more design flexibility also now there's a new page called global styles and when you click on it it shows all the colors being used for when the kit is applied it also shows different colors for backgrounds it shows you the fonts being used and it also shows you how each button call to action button and accent is styled in this particular global kit. So you can get a preview of the kit even before using it. So you can simply click on apply kit. And again, all of them are container based elements. So it's great. Now the countdown widget also gets a tiny update. I think it's a pro widget, but when you drag it, now you can select custom field click on the dynamic option and choose a custom field so that's kind of neat or you can also pick a date like so so that is also really handy now the third feature is really powerful you can mix and match units so instead of picking the same unit for all the different values such as margin padding or whichever has a unit you can click on the units drop down click on this pencil icon and you, you have to unlink the values by, by the way so you can use pixels for the top margin, but for bottom, you can use percentage. So you can say 2%. So it works. And not just that, you can also use some math functions. So you can say minimum of 3%, which is 3% of the container width or height or 10 pixels. So even that is a valid value. So you can use all sorts of math functions. So you can use max of whatever right so you can mix and match different values and this is really powerful i think it takes customization to the next level now you can totally disable google fonts from loading on your website which is awesome it's basically useful for gdpr so for you if you know gdpr basically users have to give consent before you actually load something like cookies or something so just click on settings click on site settings or you can use a finder, you can click on additional settings or just go to Elementor dashboard, click on settings, click on advanced, scroll down and you now see something called Google fonts. You can enable them or disable them. Now, if you disable them, it will use the fonts available on your website or on the website of user. And you have to basically use the custom fonts that will be hosted on your website or loaded from your website. So again, custom fonts is a Elementor Pro feature. So if you're disabling Google fonts by default, make sure you have Elementor Pro and have custom fonts enabled. That way it does have consistency across all the devices. I save the best one for the last, which is to nest elements. How do you do that? Of course, with the container, you can put elements and tweak them within more containers. You can drag another container within this, this container. That's the base level nesting. But technically now you can nest widgets and it all starts with the tab widget but before that you have to go to elementor settings click on features it's now changed to features instead of experiments scroll down make sure that the nested elements feature is turned to active and click on save changes and if you have any caching plugin make sure you purge all the cache in order for the changes to appear live on your website we'll update this page and we'll reload it so that our new feature is enabled up and running. So yeah, once the page is reloaded, let's drag in our tabs widget. It has three tabs. 
I can simply just drag an image with it into tab 1. So tab 1 has this image widget, tab 2 doesn't, tab 3 doesn't and also you can verify that from the navigator if the image is nested into the tab or if it's outside, right? If you see the navigator, it clearly shows that within this tab 1, we have our image widget. Not just image widget, you can drag in any widget into the tab's content area and you don't have to go even into this. It's that simple. So you can just put a Google Maps into tab 2 and configure it just like that so it's that easy and within tab 3 you can put maybe a video or something so, so that's awesome tabs with it again you have full customization with these options you can change the layout right you can put them on your left on the right and whatever you can do all sorts of things and you can also make it responsive so on mobile devices it will be turned into a, an accordion so that is again neat. You can choose at which width it should be turned into an accordion based on that and simply click on update. So that is nesting of elements starting with element of version 3.10. Now there's a lot more coming so stay tuned and if you like this video give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Till then happy designing.